CBS Atlanta News presents Public Affairs on Peach. And all of a sudden everything gets clear. The colors get bright. And literally, if, if I were on top of a building, I think I would have thought I could have jumped off the building and flown. Crystal meth, a drug that will trick, addict, and seduce you into thinking you can do or be anything you want. But all it takes is one overdose and your life could end. It will take your life from you. Crystal meth will take your life from you. Good Sunday morning to you. I'm Brandon Rudad. Coming up in this show, the growing problem of meth right here in Georgia. We're going to be talking one on one with a meth addict. She's going to share her darkest moments. Tell us how this drug almost ruined her life. She's also going to be telling us about her daily fight to stay sober. We're going to be looking also at this new campaign to keep kids clean launched by the Georgia Meth Project. We're also going to be sitting down with one of the leading doctors in drug addiction in the country. I wish my tire had blown out that night. I wish my car had skidded off the road. I wish I'd broken my neck. I wish I'd been crippled. But I didn't crash. I drove to that party and I did meth for the first time. I did meth and now this is my life. This is my life. Just one of four pretty dramatic PSAs soon to be released. Well, he is one of the leading doctors in drug addiction. Dr. Michael Fishman with Talbot Recovery Campus joining me this morning. Doctor, good morning to good you. Morning. You've seen a few of these PSAs. Your reaction to them? Well, they're very dramatic. I think they're very effective and they're very necessary because once you first pick up methamphetamine, it's very hard to put it down. And once you pick it up, commercials like this is really don't help putting it down. So any message out not to start it to begin with is, is very effective and they're very honest and true. And I think one of the startling statistics that people don't realize and people would say, why here in Georgia? Why are teenagers going after this drug instead of marijuana and cocaine? Uh, teenagers now using meth. Well, sure. Meth is uh, an enticing drug. It starts out cheap. It's very easy to get. The high lasts much longer than cocaine and some other drugs. And when you first take it, you feel invincible. There's a euphoria that lasts for hours and hours, up to even 24 hours. There's energy like one's never had. You get things done. You don't have to eat. You don't have to sleep. You're more productive. And believe it or not, there are some young adults that believe that meth is less dangerous than other drugs. How easily accessible is, is meth for a teenager? Certainly marijuana, you can go out there and easily find it on the street for a kid in high school. How easy is it for kids to find meth? It's just as easy. Me meth pours into Georgia. Atlanta is a hub, a mecca, if you will, of methamphetamine use. Uh, the marketing of meth in Georgia, the trafficking of meth, the travel out of the state to other states in the country, is just unbelievable and it, it's very easy to get meth and many dealers that are dealing other drugs will also deal meth. Okay, I really want to help our viewers look for warning signs of teenagers who may be using meth. Some parents very naive and, and ever thinking that my kid would never touch that stuff. That's not my kid. What are some of the early warning signs, early warning signs that your kid may be using or experimenting with meth? Well, believe it or not, early on they be more, may be more talkative. They may actually be easier to talk to, want to talk to their parents. Uh, they're getting more things accomplished. They may do better in school. Uh, they may, uh, their athletics may increase. They may be willing to help out around the house. But it's not long after that that things take a turn for the worst. Some people would say that, well, I raise my kid, he goes to a nice school, he goes to private school. My kid's not gonna touch that drug. In your experience, is that the case? Absolutely not. It's amazing when I uh, go to some of these private schools in Atlanta and lecture, sometimes just parents, they actually don't believe me that these schools have a problem. And uh, basically hear exactly what you said, my child wouldn't do that. Uh, you know, we've raised them differently. They're at such and such a private school. They're fooling themselves. It's absolutely rampant everywhere. Why would a kid want to first pick up? Is it something that they're born with an addiction? Why would a kid want to pick up? Is it somebody that maybe kind of 
antisocial and as soon as he finds the drug makes him social and makes him feel like he has friends and that he is wanted. What's that initial thing that's that, that trigger that makes a kid first try meth? Well, I don't think there's one. I think your scenario is accurate. There's a kid that may be antisocial and the first time they use, they feel a part of something. In other cases, there's clearly a genetic predisposition for addiction. Sometime it's, sometimes it's just the timing of it, being around friends that may have introduced you to it, that have it, where in another scenario, somebody may have introduced you to marijuana or cocaine or uh, ecstasy they happen to have uh, methamphetamine. Again, going back to what I said earlier, uh, many of the young adults know that this drug is very, can, can, can give you a strong euphoria, more energy. They feel like they can get their work done better, education, studies, and you know they feel like supermen, and that's out there. And that's what we heard uh, from Stephanie, our, our meth addict who spoke to us and, and really shared her story. There are people in the sober community that will tell you the only way to kind of get help and the only way to beat this disease and beat this drug is, is to truly hit your rock bottom and, and, and really want it. And, and somebody, parents out there who may come to you and say, hey, can we hold an intervention? And I wanted to talk to you about interventions and do they really work? The answer is they can. I hear a lot from families, well, I'm not going to send him to rehab because he really doesn't want it yet and he needs to hit a rock bottom. The many years I've been practicing addiction uh, medicine, sometimes people's rock bottom is death. And, and that's not a scare tactic. It just is what it is. Meth also causes irreversible damage. I have seen many people kicking and, and screaming coming into treatment that didn't want to go you know, I don't want to be here, I don't want it, but through the treatment process, as you teach the parents boundaries, the, the parents have to take back control being parents. A lot of times they lose that. The young people are breaking rules, they're doing what they want, they don't listen to authority, and over time, if treatment is long enough, and the parents have to be a major part of the process, and they learn how to set boundaries and say no, then there's many times when the, the young adult that isn't ready actually will begin to change some of their thinking during the treatment process. There are others that won't. It's like any other medical illness. You know, you hope to treat hypertension or diabetes. You hope people are compliant. Some people may be ready, some people may not be. And some people that aren't ready may actually buy into it over time. And you're saying that this is really a family process that parents can't necessarily kind of, hey, I, I sent my kid to rehab, let them fix them parents have to be involved. Absolutely, and the parents that wipe their hands of the kids, it rarely works. And in fact, believe it or not, there's some parents that will actually undermine treatment. We ask them to remove alcohol from the house. Some of the parents that are smoking pot, we ask them not to smoke marijuana. Uh, we ask them to be a parent. And I know, I know, doctor, you guys don't like to often use statistics, but crystal methamphetamine, the recovery rate from crystal compared to a lot of other drugs out there is not great. It's difficult, absolutely, but you can get clean from it if you follow recommendations. You get involved in monitoring a strong aftercare program, you're on any kind of slip or relapse very quickly. And, and drug use so prevalent here in Georgia, you guys are opening up a new center. Yes, sir, we have a new center in Columbus, Georgia, we have our center in Dunwoody and in the south side uh, near the airport. All right, Dr. Fishman from Talbot Recovery Campus, and we want to let our viewers know uh, that if you do need help, if you're watching this program right now and you say, you know what, my son or my daughter uh, may need help, may be on crystal meth, may be, have an addiction problem with other drugs out there, they can call Talbot Recovery Campus. The number right there on your screen is 1-800-445-445. 4232. Again, Dr. Fishman, thank you for your insight uh, in drug addiction. We appreciate it. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this break to wrap everything up.